Well, the Edge team is off to meet a brave young lady, 13-year-old Jordan Peterson, who had a cochlear implant just a few weeks ago. We're naturally here to see exactly how this medical technology works and comes together. But first, a tech tip from Hypertext Africa. multi-channel cochlear implant was done in 1985. Today, this technology allows a complex electronic device to be surgically implanted into a patient's ear to restore hearing. The implant consists of an internal electrode that is placed in the cochlear or inner ear and an external processor that fits behind the ear. The surgical procedure begins with the implant template being placed on the skull of the patient to mark its position. The surgeon creates a skull flap and drills a shallow bed in the skull into which the electrode receiver will fit. The site of the implant is very near the facial nerve, so this nerve is constantly monitored to avoid damaging it and creating a facial palsy. The surgeon drills down to the cochlea and inserts the electrode array into the cochlea, following which the the skull flap can be replaced and the wound closed. This procedure was performed by Dr. Razvi Ahmed, who is an ENT surgeon at the Netcare Garden City Clinic in Johannesburg. Jordan's cochlear implant operation happened exactly three weeks ago and today we're here to witness the device being switched on for the very first time. Now she could hear when she was younger but her hearing got progressively worse over the years to the point where normal hearing aids just didn't do the trick. That's where the cochlear implant operation came in. Actually, firstly, I want to thank you for allowing myself and the Edge team into this really amazing, life-changing moment for you. How are you feeling? I feel really happy. Um, Just really happy. To be on your show. Jordan, what did you miss most when you couldn't hear? I, I really miss just going to school. I just miss the sound that I used to hear, but I just want to move on and let go of the past. It's time to hear a new sound and be the new me. What she missed most about losing hearing was, and it impacted our lives so in a big way, where she said that I will not be able to hear the voices of the people that loves me, and that, that was big, you know, other than the, the fun part of hearing again, which is the music that she loves so much, watching the TV shows, but was not hearing her dad's voice and my voice and her brother and her sister. And that was, that was big for her. I love her confidence and I love how She's she said confident. she just wants to start anew, let go of the past. And, but you know, we kind of have to talk about it a little bit. Tell me what that process was like. She could hear and then the, you know, hearing started to deteriorate. Yeah, over a period of time it did, um, where she had benefits of hearing aids. So she was fine, she went to a private school, they had 11 children in the class, so it was very manageable groups. Uh, it was a school in Bondi, she loved the school, she was uh, the star swimmer at the school, she played chess. So in our world it was very normal, you know, relative to the normal world. And February was when we, we realised that she could not hear, and in the beginning we thought it was broken, the hearing aids. We then took it to Chanel's, had it checked, and they then said, no, we should come in. And that was really heartbreaking to find out that it was not the device. So, you know, at first we, we have a lot of questions and sleepless nights about why and how this happened and why to our child and all of those things. But I think we, we're at a good place and I don't know if I can speak for Trevor. I think it's about Jordan and I think China's uh, captured everything so, um, accurately in terms of uh, the challenges that we've been having, etc. And, and as parents, it's very, very difficult. We, you, like Janice mentioned, you mentioned, you asked lots of questions, why, if, etc., etc. But the remarkable thing here is the fact that Jordan is a very resilient child and she has this the tenacity just to know, know, know and move forward, you know, understand? That's, that's the type, very stubborn child. I don't know, she doesn't get it from me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, one of the other things about Jordan, she's a very good writer, and she's a very, very sensitive child. Um, she loves animals, and she had a pet dog. And, and somehow, I think that also helped her through dealing with, with, with a sudden loss, because one minute she was hearing, and the next minute it was gone. And, and I think what was really sad was the fact when the dog died, and then we realized the depth uh, that she, you know, the love that she had for this dog, and she wrote a letter. She wrote a few letters about how she felt at the time, and uh, yeah, they, they, that, I mean, that was gut-wrenching, because when you read them, you understood her level of pain, mm -hmm. you know? So, no, but she's, she's awesome. Tell me more about yourself. I love to dance. You love to dance, you my kind of girl. What are some of the other things that you want to conquer and some of your other dreams? My dream is to become a marine biologist because I just love nature. Sometimes when I'm driving with either of my parents, I see so much things destroyed on the land, like litter and other destroying stuff. That's why I want to become a marine biologist. I just want to help animals. And I think animals is people too. Love them. Were you scared about your operation? How did you feel before and after? I was just really nervous, but I've known other children who did their cochlear implants, so I tried to believe. Well, I actually did believe. I just believe, and I had, I hope, I had faith. Everything went well. Audiologist Wendy Deverson was present in theatre to test the device and obtain measurements for future programming of the processor. I'm with Wendy Deverson, who is the audiologist assisting Jordan through her whole process and journey. Before we get there, though, tell me a little bit about the technology of hearing and how it actually works. Okay, so if we look at the normal ear, normal hearing, basically the sound would go into the outer ear through the middle ear, into the inner ear, which is where we're looking at the cochlea, and from there goes up the auditory nerve to the brain. In the case where there's a severe or profound hearing loss like this, there's a usually damage to the little hair cells that you find in the cochlea. So with a conventional hearing aid, if there are existing hair, hair cells, you can amplify the sound and then it's loud enough for those little hair cells to pick up the, the message and send it to the brain. But in the case of a cochlear implant, you, it doesn't matter how loud you make the sound, you're not getting it through and sending it up to the brain where it's heard. So with a cochlear implant, what you're actually doing is you implant an electrode array into the cochlea to do the work of those hair cells. So the sound is then picked up by the sound processor, the microphones of the sound processor, changed into a digital signal, sent by radio waves from the external receiver into the internal receiver, and it goes down into the cochlea where those electrodes then stimulate the auditory nerve and send the message up to the brain. Wendy, there needs to be an audiologist on the scene in the actual theater, i.e. you, you were there. What was that like? And tell me more about the technology behind the implant. I think things have changed quite a lot in terms of the technology of the actual implant. So there are different types of implant, different lengths of implant. The actual surgery technique has changed so that they do what we call soft surgery to try and preserve any existing hearing. And then when we go into theatre, we test to make sure the implant is working before everything gets closed up. And it also, we can get test results that then help with the setting of the device later. So that's particularly useful if you've got a very young child. Things are changing, um, and when we were in theatre, I in fact tested with both the laptop and, and the wired system, and we now can do testing via a remote wireless system. So whether the audiologist will always be in theatre, I'm not sure. <laughs> Gosh, Wendy, you never know. You might be replaced with a robot in the future. <laughs> One hopes not. There's always a need to have the technology working with the people. And that's just what Jordan's received, which is a huge gift from her parents, gift of a cochlea and hearing. But now a lot of the work really starts in the technology yes. of connecting sound back to the brain. Tell me a little bit about that. Absolutely. I think in the beginning stages, one thinks about how we're going to get the finances for this. 
and how are we, we going to actually sit through the operation because for a parent it's terrible to be sitting outside while your child's having an op. But in fact the hard work starts now. The blue, the little blue dots, that is the test that I did while you were asleep in theatre. So I could go as loud as I liked because you weren't going to wake up there, <laughs> okay? And that gives me an idea of how much electrical stimulation must go to each one of those electrodes for me to get a response from the nerve to know that it's working. So this one gives me an idea of what we're looking at. So the hard work is the coming in for the mapping, which is where we're programming the technology. It's a matter of how much electrical stimulation you're sending to each electrode. And you've got to get that right, that it's it's comfortable level but not, not too loud um, because then it, it's uncomfortable to hear. When you're ready, I'm going to switch on, okay? Now, I don't know what you're going to hear. You might hear nothing in the beginning. Don't panic because I've made it very soft, okay? Then we will turn it up slowly, slowly. You are going to guide me. If it gets too loud or too uncomfortable, you just tell me to stop. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yes. It's really loud. It's really loud. What does it sound like? A beat of a music. A beat of a music. That's often what how it's described because we're kind of stimulating that nerve now. I'm going to carry on talking like this. Do you need me to make it softer? Or can you leave it like this for a little while? Just a little bit of medium. You want me to go down a little bit? Okay. Any recipient will probably go for a period of, of rehabilitation where you start to help the brain make sense of the stimulation that they're getting. So in the beginning, when there's first a switch on, and you saw it now with Jordan where she's saying there's kind of music in her ears, um, quite, quite often it's more like a stimulation. So if you hear kind of or ba ba ba, it might sound exactly the same to the brain. But within a period of time and with, with training, it improves. Shh. Are you doing? I am saying shh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jordan? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, uh, uh. Wow. <laughs> well, as an audiologist, you also have to go through the motions and adapt to how technology develops. Oh, okay. And it's quite a kit that you've had to hand over to Jordan and her parents. So, what do you find that that adjustment is like for you and for the actual recipient? You know, when I first started fitting hearing aids to children, it was a box with cables. And that's come <laughs> oh, a long, long way times from have there. changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's come a long way now, and it's, it's quite challenging for the audiologist in that you've got to learn all about wireless technology and everything, because even as, as the um, devices develop, so the way that you can use them with other technology develops, and that becomes quite challenging. But it's interesting as well in that the more hearing you can give to someone so your whole way of communicating changes with them and listening to the rehab therapists we've often joked that the, the therapists working in the cochlear implant field if you listen to their therapy they're a whole lot quieter than the ones who are working with children with language problems but with normal hearing <laughs> because you're very involved in training people to use every little bit of auditory information. Let's see how we go. Listen carefully. Good listening. Once the device was implanted, the real work began. Jordan began seeing Estelle Roberts for auditory training sessions to help her make sense of the sounds her brain was now able to hear. Follow-up speech therapy sessions are crucial for the implant to be successful. Can you that? Good. Oh. Well done. Excellent. Good. So this tells us that for the moment that map is very nice and that you're getting used to it and that you're listening and hearing all the frequencies. Jordan, what words of advice 
and comfort would you give to other people who are going to go through the same process as you? I just like to say <coughs> that I'm glad to be here on TV to show other children that the cochlear implant will work for them depending on how their life will go. But it works. And I'm just so grateful. I'd like to see you on Friday at half past four. Friday, half past four. Oh, fantastic. So can you see, this was difficult for you in the beginning, and now I keep changing it, and it's getting better, better, better. Okay, next level up. Now, we've just seen a whole load of new goodies unpacked. Chargers, the works. Who's taking responsibility of keeping all of that charged on top of an iPad, a cell phone? <laughs> Me. I am 13 years old now. I am also responsible. Okay, good answer. But I mean, you have for something that mm -hmm. needed at all help. Yeah, we will, um, I mean, of course, we have to be involved in terms of just making sure. But ideally, a Jordan's growing up, she needs to know whether we're with her or not because he'll have to know how it works, I'll have to know, and the people that we around with. But I think Jordan should be the, the key stakeholder in taking care of her things. Well, I have to say, stakeholder, that this is a team effort on so many levels and I applaud each and every one of you involved in this process and in changing a life with hearing. So from me and the EDGE team, we wish you loads and loads of love and success. And your last thing. Yeah. <laughs> your koala with his. <laughs> In June 2015, less than three months after her implant, Jordan returned to Hartford College in Johannesburg, where she is doing exceptionally well. Oh, sweet. Yeah.